Malawi continue facing to access COVID vaccines. Malawi has for the past 18 years received 1.6 trillion kwacha in global funds to fight malaria, HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis. And in other news, Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions investigates abuse of about 1 billion kwacha at police headquarters. We have these plus many other stories. Please do stay with us. <laughs> Now the news in detail. President Lazarus Chakwera has complained about struggles that poor countries like Malawi are facing to access COVID vaccines. Chakwera said this during a television interview with Sky News on Friday. Mande Pondani has the details. President Chakwera said even with the COVAX facility, it has not been easy for Malawi to access the COVID vaccines, which have in recent weeks been coming in small batches. He then challenged developed nations not to sit on the COVID-19 vaccines when poor African nations like Malawi are in desperate need of them. The president complained that without the vaccines, Malawi's health, education and economic sectors may be unable to make any meaningful progress. We have realized that without vaccines, there's not much we can do to even uh, begin to rise uh, in terms of... Uh, health issues, economic issues, and of course, education. So with uh, 1,500 people already dead and the third wave afflicting many, we need more vaccines and uh, it's not right for developed nations to see it on millions of vaccines when uh, we need them in Africa and Malawi particularly at this stage. Chagwira, who was speaking in the aftermath of the Global Education Summit, which he attended on Thursday, also disclosed that the COVID pandemic has affected the education sector, further impeding efforts in promoting girl education in Malawi. He, however, said his government is committed to keeping girls in school by enacting laws that will see them stay in school for at least 12 years, saying such as a recipe for economic development. Malawi has for the past 18 years received about $2 billion, which is equivalent to 1.6 trillion kwacha in global funds to fight malaria, HIV and AIDS, and tuberculosis. Secretary for Health Dr. Charles Mansambo says Malawi has, re has been receiving the funds through 10 grants since 2003. Blessings in Pinganjira files this report. According to Mansambo, Global Fund has helped Malawi to treat TB by 88%, which he said is the highest treatment success rate. So far, the country has treated 100,000 TB patients, including 610 drug-resistant TB patients. In 2018, the Global Fund supported the procurement of 10 million bed nets. In 2021, the fund helped Malawi to procure 9 million nets to fight malaria. Executive Director for Malawi Healthy Equity Network, George Jobe, has held Global Fund for its support. Uh, we, we appreciate the support we have been receiving from Global Fund. And uh, when we look at the three uh, diseases that uh, it supports, these are very key, uh, like uh, HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. Global Fund has saved around 38 million lives globally since its inception. Deputy Minister of Transport, Nancy Chao Lamdoko, has walked 15.4 kilometers to Chaone in Machinga district to appreciate transport challenges people in the area are facing. Mdoko becomes the first top government official to visit the area in years after former president Bakiri Muluzi visited the area in the 1990s. Chaone is located deep into the Chikala Hills in the area of traditional authority Chamba in Machika district and has no proper access roads. Eric Msigiti has more in this report, which is read by Mande Pondani. 
The over 10,000 people at Shaone find it tough to connect to the rest of the country as the area has no connecting road. There have been calls from the population for the government to construct a road which would make it possible for the people there to access various services from the Boma and other areas. Traditional authority Chamba says his people lack some services such as clean water, proper transportation and healthy care as enjoyed by fellow Malawians elsewhere. Shaul and Logo visited the area together with Director of Roads Kelvin Imponda and Roads Authority Chief Executive Officer Imano Matapa. She committed to solve the transport challenges in the shortest time possible. Malawi continues to face road network challenges, although the Tonsa Alliance government has made commitments to road infrastructure development as part of efforts to revamp Malawi's economy. Yeah has encouraged women to venture into business as one way of ensuring that they are economically independent. Kariati made the call during commemoration marking the Pan-African Women's Day. Blessings in Pinganjira has this report. Kariati said there is need for shared responsibility in families. As such, she said women need to be independent and economically reliant. She cited poverty as one of the factors during gender-based violence. The next meeting when we'll be commemorating days of Africa women, then you need to say this is what we've done and this is what we are reacting behind. But when you'll be just saying it without even taking stock, uh, at what percentage you've done good and you, at what percentage we are lagging behind, then you won't even see the imp improvements which we are doing in Malawi. Chairperson for Gender Coordination Network, Barbara Banda, asked government to put in place policies that promote economic growth for women. We want to really use this uh, particular commemoration to um, bring to the fore issues of, uh, how, of access and control of uh, money by women, of productive resources by women, of what actually en engaging in policies because this is what can then give women information to have a voice to also participate in the Africa-wide space. This year, women across the globe are commemorating the Pan-African Day with a focus on achieving self-reliance. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Stephen Kayuni, has announced investigations into the abuse of about one billion kwacha from the police headquarters in Lilongwe. The investigation follows an audit that was conducted at the Malai Police Service. Rebecca Chimjeka has more in this report, read by Mandy Pondani. The audit report that was conducted at Area 30 Police Headquarters has exposed the syndicate of police officers who connived and defrauded government in excess of 1 billion kwacha. The investigation covered the period between July 2018 and June 2020. The suspected officers, 11 in total, are expected to answer charges ranging from conspiracy to defraud, false accounting, theft by public servant, to ordering false documents, among others. Director of Public Prosecutions Steve Kayuni says he received the audit report and further investigations are underway. Minister of Homeland Security Richard Chimwendo Banda says all the suspected officers have been suspended. Communities around Msongwe and Masasa wards in Nzuzu have taken to task Mayor Kondwani Brian Yasuru on delays to renovate Kajiliwe Bridge. The communities say the bridge, which is in bad state, poses a serious threat to people's lives. Sam Kalimira has the story from Zuzu. This was revealed when committees were maintaining the road on their own from Masasa to Karigomba after acquiring knowledge from the strengthened urban governance project being implemented in Mzozo. Msongwe Ward Development Committee Chairperson Bright Muhone said councillors are aware that Kajirirwe Bridge is the only short route not only for learners but also people who sell farm produce in the Nzuzu Central Business District. The bridge as such is a big project. The committee alone cannot make it. So we have already informed our councillors. Two councillors from Masasa Ward and Msongwe Ward. Councillor for Masasa Ward, Waya, said he reported the matter to the council and that he has not received any concrete response. But Nyasuru said the bridge will be worked on using this year's infrastructure development fund. 
Nyasuru said the other bridge which will be worked on is Lamia but asked communities to work together with the council to ensure that these projects materialize. Under the consortium of three organizations, Church and Society of Livingstonia Synod, Voice of Livingstonia and Find Your Feet, Titonse Fund has pumped in 128 million kwacha for communities in 15 wards in the city on the enhancement for citizens' participation in the city's affairs, transparency and accountable and also taking duty bearers to task for questionable projects. Vice President Saulos Chilima maintains the Tosi administration is still committed to creating a suitable environment for doing business in the country. Chilima says a suitable business environment is important if Malawi is to attain a middle income status at the earliest time possible. The Vice President was speaking during a CEO's summit organized by Wealth Magazine in Lilongwe. The summit provided a platform for public and private sector leaders to share experiences and opportunities. Harry Chima is Wealth Magazine Managing Director and says the summit is one of the strategic ways towards Malawi's economic development. Um, you see, the private sector is a very critical element of any nation's development. And Malawi, at the present time, has got a dream, has got a vision called the Malawi 2063. And, you know, as it is being championed, many people think that this is a government thing or a public, public thing. But you see, the Malawi 2063, it is a collective thing. It is a Malawian thing. So every Malawian, be it private, be it public, have to rally behind this Malawian dream. I call it a Malawian dream because the desire for me is that every Malawian should be able to rally behind this dream. You're watching the evening bulletin here on Times Television. We'll be back shortly after this break. Tengani ndalama pa banki pa kumu agent kapena pa ATM ya FDH Bank. Osa mangiga, ufulu weni weni ndi 525. Ufulu 525, powered by FDH Bank PLC. Hi little one, what seems to be the matter? I know just what you need. Me! I'm Classic Milk, your instant milk powder, perfect for breakfast, tea time, or evening time, whether you're working hard in the office or just relaxing at home. And I'm suitable for tea, coffee, or an instant milk drink for kids just like you. Yes! That's exactly how I make you feel. Classic Instant Milk from Rab Processors. Full cream milk powder for the whole family. Welcome back to the news. Communities around Chamama Trading Center in Kasungu have agreed to enforce wearing of face masks in the area. The communities there say they will stop anyone without a face mask from visiting as the area registered over 200 COVID-19 cases. Kumbo Kaliwo has the story in this report read by Blessings Pingajira. Responding to COVID-19 pandemic, people around Chamama Trading Center mounted four roadblocks 
to stop those without face masks as a preventive measure. Chamama Trading Center chairperson Ajabu Mpalume says anyone without a face mask is not allowed to get into their territory. Those found not wearing face masks are not allowed entry into the market. We have also set a law that by 9 a.m. all burial arrangements should be completed. No cooking be done during funerals and that no more than 10 people be allowed in closed rooms. Senior Chief Wimbe has asked government to conduct mass testing in the area. The chief has also urged government to provide COVID vaccine to his people. Senior Chief Wimbe says his people have done their part and now government has to come in. The Development Communications Trust engaged traditional and faith leaders and other influential people in the area to find solutions to COVID-19. Betty Jumbu is Development Trust Communications Officer. So one of the best practices we have seen that the use of even key influencers at community level, the use of um, key community structure members to take lead in the implementation of the COVID-19 uh, preventive measures has been the great lesson from our end, as well as um, letting the community accept that COVID-19 is real. Then they will take action from there. So we're using risk communication as well as one approach to let them understand how bad the pandemic is. So to us, we have seen that risk communication and community engagement has been one of the best practices as evidenced by what we have seen today in TA Wimbe. In July this year, government announced measures to curb the spread of COVID-19. In international news, thousands of families fled their homes in Afghanistan's eastern Kuna province this week after fighting intensified and the Taliban seized control of two districts. We have a report courtesy of the VOA. These families have been living in this makeshift camp in the Asmar district of Kunar province for weeks now. They fled their houses in the Ghaziabad and Nare district as the Taliban began their offensives. Nasreen, a 38-year-old mother who has been living with her children in this tent for the past two weeks, says that she spent the Muslim holiday of Eid away from her home. It was difficult. We did not have new shoes, clothes and happiness. It was raining and we were displaced. Provincial officials say that they are trying to provide food and shelter to the displaced people. We have started our survey today. Four teams are working and we will have six teams working tomorrow. Officials say that thousands of families left their houses because of the fighting in the province. Local sources say government troops retreated from one district without a fight as the Taliban moved in to take control. Officials have promised to investigate why the Afghan security forces appear to have abandoned their posts. We are working on it and we will bring them to justice. Taliban have intensified their attacks in the recent months as the U.S. is completing the withdrawal of its remaining troops from Afghanistan. For Zabiullah Ghazi in Kunar, Afghanistan, this is Roshan Nurzai, VOA News, Washington. Well, that's the news for now, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. President Lazarus Chakwera complains about struggles poor countries like Malawi continue facing to access COVID-19 vaccines. Malawi has for the past 18 years received 1.6 trillion kwacha in global funds to fight malaria, HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis. And in other news, Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions investigates abuse of about 1 billion kwacha at police headquarters in Lilongwe. Remember, you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page Times 360 Malawi and following us on Twitter at three, Times 360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance and mask up. Please stay safe. You have been with me, Chawes Banda. Goodbye. <laughs>